Hello and welcome to part two of this uh, two-part series where I talk about how to fund your uh, master's degree in the US. Uh, in the first part, uh, I did cover the major sources of funding available uh, for a student in the US and, and we then discussed scholarships and assistantships as uh, two sources of funding which are extremely beneficial to students. These are uh, you know, things you should definitely look out for when you're applying, when you have secured admission into a college in the US. Uh, do check out this video. The link should show up, uh, you know, just about now. Uh, but in today's video, I'm going to talk about three other sources of funding. Uh, and, and quickly, we we'll talk about each of these. Uh, these are all sources uh, that can help you fund your master's education uh, into a top university abroad, right? Uh, all right, let's start off uh, with our first category of funding, uh, which is uh, a waiver, a tuition waiver. Now, remember, a tuition waiver... Uh, is is you know uh, in a sense the university actually saying that hey we're gonna we're not gonna charge you the entire fee we are gonna give you some portion of your tuition fee and waive it off right uh, usually a tuition waiver comes to you uh, in return for some service that you provide remember universities are uh, actually looking at what do you bring to the table how do you make a contribution either you know to the student community or the to the department or the university setup itself right and so that. Uh, you know, quantification of that contribution becomes extremely important. Uh, tuition waivers are also extremely competitive. Obviously, every student coming out of India does indeed look for tuition waivers, does indeed look for some sort of financial assistance. And so this is indeed indexed to uh, how good your academics are, how good your profile is. Uh, do you have any relevant work experience? Have you uh, conducted any prior research in uh, a particular field? Because uh, remember, these tuition waivers might not actually belong to, you know, come from your home department. It could actually be some other department within the university. So you need to quantify and show a fit with, you know, the particular department and, and your contribution towards that particular cause, right? Uh, tuition waivers uh, can also come in the form of, you know, assistantships, which means that they could also be part of an RATA or a GA. Uh, or it could be entirely independent of any sort of assistantships. But uh, the point I'm trying to make it is that make here is that uh, tuition waivers are usually partial or full, but offered to master's candidates. That's usually the case. Uh, and and if you are looking to you know improve your chances of getting a tuition waiver, it becomes extremely important that you know irrespective of whether they ask you this question separately or not, you need to spell out in application essays your motivation right and and you need to spell out you know what kind of a strong academic record you have you know probably highlight your research credentials uh, highlight how you know the area that you conducted research on the kind of experience you've gathered would be of value to the university to the kind of lab setup uh, and and link it to specific goals that these labs that these departments might have uh, and last but not the least you need to show how you can individually contribute. And I think one thing that you need to keep in mind as a student here is, you know, you need to be differentiable, right? You need to make a case for why you alone deserve to get a tuition waiver and what is it uh, that you bring in return that is also unique, right? Uh, so, so those are aspects you need to keep in mind as part uh, of getting a tuition waiver uh, towards, you know, getting some financial assistance from the university or a specific department. Next up, I'm going to talk about part-time jobs, right? Now, every single one of us who looks to apply to a university abroad immediately has this picture of, uh, you know, I'm going to make uh, use of my free time towards a part-time occupation. And that usually is with the target of funding some part of your living expenses. Now, remember, part-time jobs, by definition, are part-time. They probably give you minimum wage or a little more than that. Uh, and, and it's going to be a few hours of work every single week. and uh, you can't really expect to fund your tuition fee by way of part-time jobs, but it can definitely go a long way towards funding your living expenses, right? Which could be quite significant as well. Uh, and uh, the thought here, and, and I'm going to leave you with this uh, philosophy, is that uh, whether it's an on-campus or an off-campus job, uh, you know, a part-time uh, role should actually be desirable. It should be in the sense of, uh, you know, it should fit with your overall career goals, right? And and instead of sort of choosing a part-time role that really doesn't add value to your profile, I think you need to invest time pretty early into your 
uh, you know, into your study journey in, in ensuring that you can avail of any opportunities that exist. And how you can do that is by uh, keeping in touch with, you know, the student services, career services office, the international student office, if need be, and make sure that you regularly correspond with them. You have an open, open chat with them about the kind of opportunities that are available and make sure that you get the information at the right time and place, right? Now, if information is paramount, uh, you know, and other sources of you uh, hearing about job listings include, you know, career fairs that might be organized uh, at the university, any sort of mailing lists that you can possibly get yourself on because these sort of informal sources uh, are, are indeed very, very important to at least get the first information about the kind of roles on offer. Uh, and, and obviously the follow-up uh, means that you need to have a, an updated resume ready at all times. I did talk about this in previous videos. It's extremely important when you're looking at funding your education. Uh, you know, it's very important to have an updated resume uh, to, to ensure that when, you know, a prospective employer or a job opening comes up, uh, that you have a current, you know, CV to present and, and you must indeed have a covering letter and some sort of a story to present to the employer uh, on why you should be considered for that particular role, right? All right. The third source of funding I'm going to talk about in this video includes, you know, the most obvious education loans. Uh, now, there are plenty of sources of you availing of an education loan. These include, you know, loans provided by governments, uh, loans provided by uh, universities, loans provided by private banks and also other private financial institutions. Uh, now, in a previous video, I have already covered, you know, scholarships that are indeed offered by the Indian government. And, and so you should consider checking that video out. Uh, but uh, having said that, most education loans tend to be quite comprehensive, right? Which means that education loans can actually cover not just your tuition fee and other kind of charges that the university might leave out. But it can also cover for your living expenses uh, and other associated costs, including travel, right? So, so in a sense, the loan, education loan, puts off your financial liability into the future. Uh, the concern here, obviously, is uh, that you need to get a loan that fits your needs, that you know uh, doesn't overburden you in a sense, right? And uh, at the onset, it becomes extremely important to understand all the you know, financial instruments available at, at our disposal, the kinds of loans uh, that typically are offered by banks and other financial institutions. And these could vary from, you know, loans that are, uh, you know, collateral based, which means these are secured by some collateral that you present and others which are actually unsecured, which do not require any sort of collateral. These typically tend to be university, to buy, you know, when you avail of a program, you study at a course, uh, a course that is very well recognized that, uh, has almost a job guarantee of sorts, right? So unsecured loans are pretty hard to come by. Um, uh, other categories of loans include loans that are subsidized either by the government or by the university and, and typically look at, you know, students who are candidates that are that qualify in a particular category, in a particular, uh, you know, uh, kind of student. Uh, and finally, other kinds of loans include loans that are provided by, you know, government or uh, private grants or even loans provided by uh, loans that are co-signed that require a co-signing right somebody to uh, you know sort of take responsibility as a co-signing on the loan means that they also accept partial liability uh, for for the amount that you avail of right so so those are the different kinds of loans and and if you're looking to avail one i think the prime concern needs to be it should give me the kind of financial assistance i need but should also do that uh, at a reasonable rate of interest as well as a you know a comfortable repayment plan right uh, so so all of these details need to be threshed out by you know finding out uh, and contacting a large number of institutions and and getting the best sort of deals out of them uh, if you need to uh, get more information if you need to understand this process a little better don't hesitate to reach out to us uh, the link in the description gives you a very very convenient way of you know simply giving you giving us a shout so so i hope that you'll do that finally before i leave i you know since i'm talking about reaching out to us here's how we can help we at mentors capital pride ourselves on having a very very vast network of mentors these are people who've studied a variety of courses from universities across the globe uh and and the journey that they walk 
could actually have important uh, learnings for you, you know, in, in your own application journey. And uh, well, our philosophy is simple. If you have a question to ask, uh, we can connect you with the right mentor who can give you those answers. And we can also handhold you through the entire admission process, which, you know, starts right from you shortlisting schools uh, and programs, uh, preparing for standardized tests, creating and crafting, you know, impactful application essays, LORs, and so on and so forth. And finally, uh, clearing that elusive, you know, video assessment, online assessment, or even a personal interview, right? Our expertise spans across the, you know, the board and, and, uh, well, if you need to hear more, do give me a shout. The link in the description allows you to reach our website. You can drop me a note with your requirement. And I'm sure that one of our team members will get uh, in touch with you very, very shortly. I hope you liked what we covered in this, uh, this two-part series. In the next video, I'm going to give you a four-point strategy to ensure that you are able to secure a scholarship when you choose to study abroad. So, so do give that a look. And uh, well... Like this video, share it in your uh, circles. And if you haven't subscribed yet, yet, I urge you to do so immediately. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and wish you all the very best.